Welcome back to the Aussie Shed, ladies and gentlemen. Lots of little projects going on with the Fair Lady at the moment. As you can see, there's stuff hanging off it everywhere that have been painted and, you know, various jobs. You can see the shed's in a shambles. There's crap everywhere. There's crap all over the benches. But regardless of that, what I'm doing, I'm preparing to start reassembling the rear end of the car out of all of the new repainted, refreshed, replated uh, components. So what I'm actually doing is I am starting to replate all the nuts and bolts, all the factory nuts and bolts that I need to uh, reassemble everything. And uh, I've just got a whole heap of them sitting in acid over here that I thought I might just show you what I'm doing. So what I've got in this bucket here, it's actually a bucket inside a bucket with heaps of holes drilled through the bottom of it. And in that is all of the bolts that I'm currently working with at the moment. They've all been stripped with a wire wheel, soaked in petrol, washed out in detergent and water prior to this stage of being dipped in acid. Now I'm just about to pull them out of the acid, put them in a uh, bucket of clean water next to them, and then give them a hose after I pull them out of that and clean them up, and then we'll have a bit of a look at them. So you can see what we've got here folks, this is all the nuts and bolts to reassemble the rear axle assembly and various components in the back. Um, lower control arms, all that sort of stuff, anything that was zinc coated originally, I'm planning on recoating. Some of the bolts, some of the uh, more high tensile stuff was just painted and I will be doing the same thing with those. But uh, as I say, anything that was uh, zinc plated, so the original stuff was like a zinc with a yellow CAD. Um, I assume that's what it was, so we'll be using zinc and um, yellow chromate, which will give the same appearance, and it's actually a little bit more durable, but we'll keep washing these out, and then what I'll do from here is I'll go and hit them on the wire wheel again, which will uh, brighten the surface up a bit, so they'll be getting close to be ready for replating. So here we go folks, this is all of the uh, stuff that we just had in that container there in the acid and they've now been rinsed off, blown off with the air blower to sort of flash dry them so they don't start to go too rusty. And you can see the finish on them is, um, you know, it, it, it's kind of fairly clean but it's still a bit, uh, a bit all over the place, little tiny bits of the original coating left and little areas where you've started to get a really slight bit of surface rust sort of back on the various things. So this one here, folks, you can see it's really, really clean. So what I've done with that is it's gone onto the wire wheel after it's come out of the acid bath. So that's a comparable bolt, how it came out. Now, to get a good finish with your, uh, with your zinc plating, that's what you need to have the bolts like when they go in the zinc plating. Once all these bolts have been wire wheeled and they're all nice and shiny again, uh, we start the plating process and the first part of the plating process is all these have to go into a really heavy alkaline bath at a really high temperature which cooks out any remaining uh, grease or anything like that and then from there they get washed off and then we start the plating process so what I'll do folks I'll, uh, I'll go through with a wire wheel while sitting over here that's the Aussie Shed wire wheel machine folks it's an old spa pump with a wire wheel adapted to it. It's an absolute ripper. You cannot slow this thing down in any way, shape or form. But I digress. Back to the bolts. So yeah, we'll get them all cleaned up till everything looks like this. And uh, I'll uh, I'll see how I go and I'll, I might run you through the plating process. But uh, mate, the fair lady's looking pretty good. There she is. Once you start getting things back in there, mate, it's gonna look very bloody flash. Anyhow, onward. Right folks, I'm now at the stage of uh, electroplating all those bolts that we cleaned up earlier. There's a batch in the zinc bath here that are bubbling away nicely. They're just about ready to come out. 
and I've also got a batch sitting here in this uh, alkaline cleaning solution, cleaning degreasing solution. That's sitting at about 90 degrees C. They sit in there for about five, ten minutes. So I'm just about to pull these out and uh, clean them off, or rinse them off, and then put them in the yellow chromate. I'll just turn all this off. And uh, I'll give you a bit of a look what they look like once they have the, the zinc plating on them. So you can see, folks, they're now zinc plated. But what we're going to do is we're going to give them a coat of uh, yellow chromate, which will uh, help prolong the life of the zinc and everything. So we'll get the first guy here off and pull him out, and then we'll bring it over here into our washout solution. So this is our washout here. It's just a um, distilled water wash, and I've got a bit of a bit of a trigger gun here just to, if it'll friggin' prime. There we go, just to give it a bit of an extra swoosh. And then we go from there. That's what we're looking at at this point. Over here to our yellow chromate bucket. So I'm running these for about 30 seconds, folks. So you can see it's instantly sort of goes yellow when we drop it in there. So about 30 seconds. And there it is, folks. That's uh, straight out of the yellow chromate. Now we've got a rinse bucket. Well, we'll go and rinse this sucker off. Alrighty, this is our chromate rinse bucket. We just dip it in once, give it a little bit of a swirl. Pull it out. Give it one more little swirly. And that's it, folks. Now we'll just hang that up to dry. I'm actually using a, uh, a battery-powered um, air blower to sort of blow the rest of the water off because I find it's the only thing I can do that doesn't uh, blow the colour off or um, damage the finish and it actually helps set the yellow chromate really really well So uh, I'll give you a look when I've got a whole heap done folks and uh, see what you reckon so I'm just pulling a few things out of the alkaline bath guys And you can see it's very hot and steamy in there And that's uh, that's what they look like coming out of there. So from here we rinse them and then we dip them in a 5% hydrochloric acid solution for about 20 seconds, rinse them off again. And then from there they go into the zinc plating tank for the first time. So we'll swirl him off in there. Drop him into the 5% hydrochloric for about 20 seconds or so just as a final sort of a clean, you know, and just to sort of etch the bolt a little bit, the bolts or nuts, whatever we do, and etch them a little bit. So they uh, they take the zinc a little bit better. They start to get a few little fine bubbles coming off them in here, which is great. It just means that the, uh, the acid is doing its job. Uh, we don't get a big reaction, but like I say, it is only 5%. That's about that. And I'll just go back into my washout bucket over here, which is probably not really the right thing to do, but it seems to work for me. Just means I have one less bucket. And then I just spray them off with some, um, some distilled water. Just a bit of a final clean off. And then from there, into the plating tank. And then we just hang them off, off the bar here, guys. And just get this set up at the moment. I'm running three little droppers at the moment. So the next one coming out of the, the bath. So I'll just clean this one up, folks. I'll get it in there and we'll fire up the zinc bath. All 
it. So this is our last little bunch that's going uh, going in on the dropper this time. Right, looking good. I'll just uh, flick the power supply on, pump on. Might just bump that up slightly. It's about uh, 2.4 amps. And uh, there you go, folks. We're bubbling away nicely. So uh, 20 minutes in there, and uh, we should be looking pretty good. Then from there. You know, the yellow crow, mate. So I'll let that bubble away for 20 minutes. Over that 20 minutes, I tend to shuffle this around a little bit. Just to even up the coating a little bit. Uh, it's pretty good anyway, but, um, you know, everything helps. And uh, I'll come back when we're finished. So you can see here, folks, this is the last little batch of four bolts that I did. Just get one off there. These are um, just kind of curing out here. So it doesn't look, uh, I don't know how our focus is there folks, like I say, it's pretty hard for me to tell with this thing, but um, yeah, it's looking not bad, the colour develops a little bit as time goes by, it, um, it's fairly gold at the moment, but it gets a lot of green and, and sort of brownie ripples and stuff in it as it goes on, but anyway, that's what they look like. Right, folks, I'm inside the house here. I've uh, borrowed Mrs. Aussie Shed's clothes air dryer thing on the bobby. I've got it set up in front of the uh, the aircon unit, which is blowing hot at the moment, being it's a little bit chilly here tonight. So I thought, while oh, she's in bed, I'll just sneak in and hang all these in front of the aircon just to help dry the uh, yellow chromate finish. It does take a little while just to. Uh, develop its color and uh, and cure properly but uh, it's looking really really good it's all shaping up very nicely you can see there's a sway bar bracket there turned out really good you know um, brake line clips and um, you know just all the all the stuff but, uh, it's looking really good Defent there. Not sure if I'm going to use that, but uh, I've done it anyway, and just just everything. It's uh, all turned out really, really good. So there you go, folks. There's uh, 68 various nuts, bolts, brackets, clips, and stuff uh, that I did today, and it's all turned out very nice. All in preparation for some serious reassembly. Alrighty, and back to the shed. Very happy to have all that plating done, folks. That was uh, quite a lot of work in getting all these bolts ready for reassembly here. Thought I'd just have a quick word on uh, hydrogen embrittlement. Now, hydrogen embrittlement is the big boogeyman when it comes to electroplating, particularly bolts and things like that. A lot of folks are very concerned about that, and for good reason. But you have to understand that uh, hydrogen embrittlement only affects... Uh, certain grade bolts. Basically, uh, anything above property class 10.9, you wouldn't uh, electroplate. And if you did, you'd you'd really have to bake them out after you after you plated them. And then 12.9, don't even do it. You know, it's just too dangerous. There's there's there have been too many failures with 12.9 grade bolts um, from hydrogen embrittlement. Now, that being said. I have separated all the bolts before doing this into what I consider to be platable, stuff that I consider to be not platable, and stuff that needs to be replaced. So um, the only bolts that I have plated are ones that were originally plated on the car from the factory. Now, those bolts seem to have been selected uh, by Nissan to use in this situation where they've found a good compromise between um, corrosion protection and strength with the bolts. I don't know exactly what grade they are because that information is not available, but I do know for a fact that they are quite soft. They file very easily. Uh, they don't have the 
have the sound when you tap them that a really high grade bolt has and I honestly believe that uh, you know car manufacturers are no fools if they're putting a bolt in a situation where corrosion prevention is necessary they're not going to use a bolt that is susceptible to hydrogen embrittlement and uh, to increase the strength in the bolt they will always just step up a size or two to get the strength they need in a lower grade bolt so again they're the only bolts that i've replated plus brackets and things like that as i say there are uh, very high tensile fasteners you can tell straight away used in areas of the rear axle assembly and uh, you can see that the finisher in the factory wasn't electroplated they just were coated they were being put to one side they will be recoated and any of the bolts that were damaged replacements have been ordered from Nissan so yeah folks often I'm a little bit short with it with the uh, information on these things I just tend to do stuff and film it but uh, I know from watching other people's uh, electroplating videos and things like that there's always lots of comments about hydrogen embrittlement and things like that so which is which is fair enough but uh, if you understand the process and you know the relationship between the bolts that are used and corrosion protection and all that kind of stuff at least you then give yourself a chance of, of being on the money with what you're doing but anyway folks just a little bit of info there is uh, what I'm doing and why I'm doing it so I think we'll leave this video here and move on to something else. In uh, the next video that will be coming out, folks, we'll be refitting the fuel tank and uh, and then starting to progress from there. The order is the fuel tank's got to go back in, then all the brake lines have got to go back in, then the rear uh, suspension cradle has to go back in, and then we start uh, building out all the um, components in the rear suspension. I have all that stuff here. It's just a matter of devoting the time to be able to do it. So uh, we should be full steam ahead for the next uh, couple of months, I reckon, as far as YouTube videos go, without any hold-ups. I do still have some big material hold-ups, uh, which is really, really frustrating the hell out of me because I'm really being dicked around. But yeah, depending on how that turns out, I might even make a video about it because it's, it's just become such a point of frustration that I'm getting nowhere with this particular large Z supplier in the U.S., they're the number one you might say anyway i've really got the dirts about it but like i say but maybe i'll just do a video on that at some point depending on whether they come through for me or not but uh bloody hell talk about bad customer service anyway folks i'll leave this video here as always thanks for stopping by the aussie shed bloody pleasure to have you here with me i hope you're enjoying the progress on project fair lady uh she should be quite the smick machine when it's all done but uh, for now, folks, um, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.